Welcome to this episode of Eureka. We are going to have a very interesting conversation with Dr. Brahm Singh, who is the president of Indian Society for Protected Cultivation. You know Leh, which is a cold desert in India, remote, almost nothing. He made a miracle over there. We are going to talk about lots of interesting stuff. Keep watching Eureka. Before that, we will take a brief look at his brief profile. Keep watching Eureka. An excellent horticulture scientist, Professor Brahma Singh, who is known for his expertise on protected cultivation and his efforts in developing acro technologies for the high altitude areas of Himalayan region of Leh and for identifying and popularizing the fruit crops, mainly sea buckthorn and Indian mulberry. Professor Brahma Singh did his B.Sc. Honours in Agriculture and Animal Husbandry from the G.B. Panth University of Agriculture and Technology, Panthnagar in 1964 and M.Sc. from the same university in 1966. Subsequently, he did his doctoral studies at the Indian Agricultural Research Institute, New Delhi and secured Ph.D. in 1970. During his tenure as the director of the Field Research Laboratory, now Defence Institute of High Altitude Research at Leh. Sea buckthorn and Indian mulberry are two such fruit and medicinal crops identified and popularised by him. He also introduced many scientific agro techniques by utilising solar and soil heat to foster cultivation of several vegetables such as tomatoes, brinjal, capsicum, watermelon, muskmelon and others in lay which were considered impossible to grow before his tenure there. Besides this, he was also involved in the development of space food for the first Indo-Russian space mission while serving at Mysore. Holder of four patents and fellowship of prestigious scientific academy and society, Professor Singh bestowed with many prestigious awards. Noted among them, Indira Priyadarshini Vrikshmitra Award from the Ministry of Environment and Forest in 1995 and Padmashri, the fourth highest civilian award for his contributions to the field of science and technology in 2014. Thank you, sir. It's a very wonderful opportunity. It's been uh, very interesting that you are uh, here with us in this conversation. Let me start with this uh, point. Sibakthan, which yeah. was thought by the locals as a menace. You made it into a money-spinning opportunity for them. Can you tell us a story? How you thought this thing which people thought, local people thought as a weed can benefit them? Uh, see, I was posted in Leh mm -hmm. under a lab mm -hmm. of DRDO, Defence Research and Development Organisation. Uh -huh. My main job was to develop the technology for the production of fresh vegetable, milk and mm -hmm. uh, other things for the Javans. Mm -hmm. But one day, a group of farmer mm -hmm. came with mm -hmm. a twig of a plant mm -hmm. asking me, Sir, this is spoiling our field mm -hmm. of barley and wheat. Mm -hmm. Kindly let us know how to get rid of that. Okay. I told them frankly, mm. I know nothing about it, uh -huh. but give me some time. Uh -huh. uh, I will let you know mm -hmm. what it is and how to manage with that. Mm -hmm. Then uh, in those days, somewhere in 1992, mm -hmm. there mm -hmm. were no facilities. Google was not there. Mm -hmm. The library facilities also were not there in place like Leh. Mm -hmm. So I used to come for the library to Indian Agriculture Research Institute. Mm -hmm. Pusa, from where I did my PhD. Okay, sir. So I came over here uh -huh. in connection with something, uh, some meeting, etc., and found time to just found out about that sea bakthon. Mm -hmm. I was lucky enough to lay my hand on mm -hmm. the literature, mm -hmm. and uh, as I went on reading about it, mm -hmm. I got interested to the extent mm -hmm. that I started devoting a lot of time okay. and requested the farmers there, uh -huh. please don't touch it. Uh -huh. I will let you know. This will give you much more than what you are 
harvesting from your main crops. Very, very interesting. Let's uh, look at the name Sibakthan. It's very, very, uh, you know, curious. Why this name for that plant? Oh, Sibakthan is a thorny bush. Okay. Uh, you know, thorn. So, this is prefix on that. Mm -hmm. Sibakthan, this is in the Arctic region, mm -hmm. all along the sea. Mm. It is seen, so it has been named as Seabuckthorn. Okay. But its botanical name uh. is Hippophy, uh -huh. Rhamnides. Uh -huh. And Hippophy is a genus uh -huh. which is composed of two words uh -huh. Hippo, uh -huh. Phi. Uh -huh. Hippo means, uh, see, horse, uh -huh. and uh, Phi means signing, uh -huh. signing horse. Uh -huh. So there is an interesting story. Yeah, uh -huh. the, the, the horses were let loose uh -huh. to when uh, they were. Uh, uh, I think completed their uh, job. Uh, uh, job are they? They were aged enough. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Just they were let off. Uh -huh. And uh, see, after some time, somebody observed that uh -huh. that they are becoming uh, uh, better and better uh -huh. and shiny even. Uh -huh. That's how the research on the sea buckthorn is started. Okay, oh, so the horses which were uh, not good, I mean, became ill with left out okay. and then they came back uh, shining yeah. and people thought that what is this horse oh, eating yeah, which is making them shining. Yeah, that's how mm -hmm, mm -hmm. long back. It okay, it's, it's a very yeah, long story of uh, in uh, ah, horticulture. Okay, let's come back to the story okay. in lay. Okay. So you told the farmer that uh, don't touch the Seabakthorn, it's going to bring you profit that's more it. than what you are cultivating. That's it. So then what happened? Uh, see, so after that I organized a seminar in Delhi mm -hmm. and invited the people, mm -hmm. the industrialist mm -hmm. and the scientists etc. Mm -hmm. Luckily we got one industrialist who mm -hmm. was interested mm -hmm. to put up a pulping plant there and come out mm -hmm. with the, a, some sort of a beverage mm -hmm. with the help of our laboratory uh, of DAR, DO. Okay. That laboratory's name is Defense Institute of High Altitude Research. Okay. At uh -huh. that time it was known as field research laboratory. Okay. Uh -huh. So, the uh, plant was put up mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. We helped him a lot mm -hmm. and we standardized the beverage mm -hmm. which was named with all completing the uh, mm -hmm. formalities, mm -hmm. Lehe Berry. Uh, because uh, it's from Leh? Yes. And uh, kind of a berry. Ba berry, sort uh -huh. of a uh -huh. fruit. Uh -huh. Very, very yeah, interesting. So. Why this uh, fruit is uh, very important? I mean, is it just uh, that it was there and then you started using it or is as uh, some interesting qualities. Uh, see, this, the fruit of sea buckthorn, mm. I call it a, a storehouse of nutrients. Okay. It's a rich source of vitamin C, uh -huh. A uh -huh. and B. Mm. Interestingly, the seed and pulp, mm. both have got oil mm. and that oil, it's rich source of Omega fatty acids, okay. particularly omega 3, mm -hmm. omega 6, mm -hmm. omega 7 mm -hmm. and others mm -hmm. besides having other uh, pharmaceutical properties. I see, okay. So, which means that uh, the juice itself is uh, very nutrient and uh, helpful for a human being. That's how perhaps the horses were becoming shiny. That's it. So, mm -hmm. that's how uh, the whole uh, story uh, comes to a circle from its name to its use today. Uh, and uh, what has happened after that? You started a pilot plant, you standardized the production, you were able to extract the pulp. Did it actually benefit the local people? Oh, yes. Uh, because, uh, see, interesting thing is, it's growing wild over there. Mm -hmm. Farmers still, mm. even on that, mm. are not cultivating. Okay. So, it's a wild growth. Uh -huh. So, farmers from their field mm. are nearby forest area, mm. pick up the fruit, mm -hmm. supply to the pulping plant mm -hmm. and get the uh, return. Mm -hmm. We started at that time uh, getting the fruits at the rate of uh, uh, during uh, I think uh, 94, 95, uh, something like that. Mm. Uh, rupees uh, 2.5 uh, per kg, okay. two and a half rupees. Uh -huh. But now mm. uh, the price is uh, 15, 17 rupees okay. per kg like that's that. A, that's uh, a substantial increase. In, that's uh, it. In and of, the uh, total uh, pulp mm. which is going as on date mm. from there mm. is costing around rupees 7 crores of rupees but the potential mm. is of rupees 700 crores okay so because the mm. area the mm. wild growth in that area mm. we got the satellite uh, imagery done the mm -hmm. DIDO got this satellite imagery done 11500 hectare wild, wild growth okay uh -huh. 
and it is difficult to enter the uh, wild growth because of the thorny nature of ah, the bush. Ah, 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 ah. Uh, so whatever harvesting is being done of the fruits, that is from the periphery, mm -hmm. what the farmers are. Inside they are not able to enter it. So the efforts are on how to just exploit that, creating the, uh, the pathways mm -hmm. by just uh, removing some of the plants and just Okay. have the good harvest. Okay, Very interesting. I mean, uh, this shows uh, as a person who was uh, part of uh, DRDO, Defense Research uh, Laboratory Organization, you have converted a threat into an opportunity. Yes, it was a big threat uh, considered by the farmers. Mm -hmm. And uh, after uh, just studying it mm -hmm. and applying the technology to that, mm -hmm. it has become an opportunity, great opportunity, at least for those people who are just benefited now. In the beginning, they used to laugh at me. Now they are enjoying the fruit. I'm uh -huh. happy. Very, very interesting. Mm -hmm. And this is the right time to take a very short break. How in a remote region, science and technology application can create wonders is this story tells us. We'll take a very short break. After the break, we are going to discuss about his other very interesting contribution. Keep watching Eureka.